Nutrition, most food on the market today is not digestible. My goal for this presentation is to make everything I tell you very easily digestible. Um, my grandmother always used to say, keep it simple, stupid. So that's how I am. That's the way I talk about these things. There's a phenomenal amount of science and research and biochemistry beneath nutrition. I want to keep it really, really simple. Oakram's razor, anybody know what that is? The simplest answer is usually the right one. And when it comes to nutrition, that's also the case. So my grandmother was right, and this famous physicist was also right. Um, through, when you know how to eat, you can undo a lifetime of damage that's been done through doing all the wrong things. Your body is so wired to correct itself, and when you start doing the right things, it starts taking care of itself. And I want to help you and empower you to stop recreating problems in the future so that you can have an incredible quality of life for the rest of your life. Did you know that we are genetically programmed to actually live to about 150. That we actually have the capacity to live well over 100. And there are places around the world where people regularly live to over 100 years of age and are pretty functional and flexible and active. It's pretty cool, right? In fact, Sato is a Japanese company, right? So Okinawa is a specific island where people tend to live longer than most, and there's a lot of reasons why that's the case, but they've been studied quite a bit. Okay, cool. So just a couple of interesting statistics. Did you know that as of 2004, obviously that was you know, five and a half years ago, 66% of Americans were overweight or obese? Ah. Overweight people now outnumber undernourished people in the world. And this is crazy. The average American consumes more than 100 pounds of sugar and sweetener per year. We consume about 8 pounds of broccoli per year. So if you had a visual, imagine I had for each of you a pile of sugar bags here, <laughs> like this measly pile of broccoli, right? And so I'm, I'm fascinated by the healthcare debate, obviously. But let me tell you that I don't care how much money you dump into healthcare reform, Healthcare reform will make none of us healthier unless we get this. And in fact, 70% of all costs associated with the crazy healthcare costs right now are related to the four major killers, which are diabetes, heart disease, stroke, um, stroke, cardiovascular disease, cancer, and diabetes. All of these are nutritionally related. They're all stress related. So, fine. I want just a couple other things. People who eat well and exercise regularly age slower, live longer, enjoy life more, they're happier, they make more money. These are statistics, these are actual studies that were done at good universities. They have more passion and they contribute more to life. Does that sound good? Right? Who doesn't want that? Um, stress is the number one killer in our society. Nutritional stress accounts for at least 50% of the stress we have. Meaning, when we junk refined foods, we actually zap our energy reserves so that we're actually more stressed than we need to be. I mean, life is hard enough, right? So if now all of a sudden you're not feeding yourself to be able to carry out the job that you need to carry out, you end up with more stress. We're weaker, we're less resilient, we're sicker, and we're more stressed. You know, so it's like if you were, you had this great car, you know, you had like your, your Maserati or Ferrari, and all of a sudden you're putting in the worst possible gasoline, and you've got this high-performance engine that can't even do it. Now, once we put the right stuff in, the body starts to pull itself. Does anybody know what this is? It's pretty obvious, but <laughs> please, anybody? Food pyramid. Food pyramid. Cool. Okay, that's exactly what it is. And this is the old version. Does anybody know who came up with this? I'll give you a hint. It's not a person. It's a branch of the U.S. government. <laughs> hint. You don't let the government do things like this. FDA. <laughs> Close. You would think. You would think, no, it's not. Anybody else? That's it. The U.S. Department of Agriculture. So here's the thing. It's really good idea typically not to have people who have an agricultural interest telling you what to eat. So this is actually a completely backwards food pyramid. This is what we were, most of us, I'm going to presume most of us are in roughly the age, the same age group here, somewhere between 30 and 55 in this room. All of us have got this. I know you're 27, I'm sorry. <laughs> so it's a flawed pyramid. It's totally upside down. So the USDA basically came up with this and they said, well, 
this is what we think should happen, but there was no scientific evidence to support it whatsoever. But this is what happens when you get sort of mixed interests telling us what we should do. And so ultimately it was based more on really the interests of the USDA. Now the new pyramid that came out in 2005, so enough evidence went around and everybody in the world said, wait, this is crazy. We cannot be basing what we tell people to eat on completely flawed science. It just doesn't work. So they came up with the new pyramid. Now it's better, but it's still the USDA and it still doesn't give you any usable information. It's just, it's just stuff, you know? It's, it's just knowledge that doesn't have any practical applications. And so that's what we want to do here. So, and that's kind of what we want to do, is that I want to help you get information that really helps you to bust some of the myths that are out there, to really help you shift and change how you view this stuff, to make it easy so you can feel good, and have your family feel good too. So just a bit about me, I'm a doctor of chiropractic. Many people don't know, but that's actually a five-year full-time degree. We have more hours um, in terms of diagnosis and how the body works than a lot of medical doctors. What we don't have is surgery and pharmaceutical training, nor do we have residency. I also have a master's degree in acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine. So that was also a three-time four-year degree, full-time degree. <laughs> I've uh, worked with lots of Hollywood stars that you would know, helping them to get their diets back on track and helping them to get their bodies working. I work with Olympic athletes from three countries. Um, some of them you would know. Um, I hold the highest level of training in my specific application called Network Spinal Analysis. I travel around and I do lots of cool stuff with that. And I'm close friends with the gentleman who started it. And I have thousands of hours of postgraduate nutrition training. Constantly studying, constantly going courses just so I can learn more. And overall, I've been involved in this industry for over 20 years. So that's my background. That's my brain. That's what I bring to the table. I love my grandmother. Keep it simple, stupid. The basics, basics, basics. If you get nothing else from this and you want to just enjoy your salad and check out for the next 30 minutes, God bless you. Basics are simple. Consume less meat. I'm not asking you to be a vegetarian. Milk, sugar, chemicalized artificial junk food, alcohol, tobacco, and caffeine. Good start. Drink more water. Eat more whole grains. Eat more vegetables. Eat more leafy greens. I'm going to go into detail about this so you really know how to do this right. But if you just got this, you will be Exponent, you'll be by many orders of magnitude ahead of most of your country mates here in the United States. This is my favorite rule of thumb. It's the 90 10 rule. It means 90% of the time I give 100% of my effort to eat really healthy foods, and 10% of the time I do whatever I want. I go to uh, this burger joint in Dilworth. They have great burgers and they've got this amazing banana pudding with vanilla wafers. 90 10. <laughs> if, if you don't want to go 90 10, go 80 20. The concept is, is that you're putting effort into doing the right thing way more than you're putting effort into doing the wrong thing. And it's not your fault if you haven't done it right because most of us never knew because we never had to train. But now you don't have an excuse. So again, avoid extremes, moderation in all things. And this is a fairly foolproof plan. And if you feel like you're stuck, if you feel like you need help, if you feel like there's just chronic health challenges or chronic pain that's held you back, you know, that may be, there may be some other avenues for you. So that's basically.